G'day guys, welcome back to Beers and Break Evens. Heading into round, I want to say 12. It's round 12, yes. Timmy, back from Magic Round. Jeez, some people How question you, mate. Some people question you, but you're pretty sharp. Yeah, I'm, I'm right up there with the best of them. I'm there's, feeling better than you. There's not many in the shed sharper. Uh, yeah, if I can hope you're feeling better than me. Not many tools in the shed sharper? Yeah, I don't know what I said, but... <laughs> Kat, how are you? I'm really good. I'm feeling fresh. I've uh, had as much sleep as possible post Magic mm. Round. Needed it. I needed it. Yeah, I just watched Kat uh, jackknife herself in the face <laughs> with her headphones. So <laughs> that was good fun. She had it coming too because she was carrying on a little bit. But we'll get to that. We'll wow. get to that. Wow. Um, actually, you know what, Kat? Fuck it. Take us away. How'd you go on the weekend, Kat? <laughs> get over done with. <laughs> I scored 1,326. A decent... Uh, amount higher than both of you. But unfortunately, in the only league that matters to me is the about even league. I lost to Maddie the Water Boy by one point. Mm. Oh. In what universe do you score like that and lose a head to head? My head to head is so bad because I've lost by two points so many times. It's a universe of karma, I think. Oh, chill out on the whole karma thing. You're only as good as your last head-to-head win. Exactly right. <laughs> no idea how we Do you want to but... share your scores, boys? Yeah. Yeah, how did we go? Well, Guru, you got 1,169. <laughs> 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 and Timmy, 1,261. Also not great, but next to Rue, I feel like I'm I'll tell you of... what, mid-weekend... I to only lose to you by what's that like ninety eight or something ninety five or something. I, mm. I thought you were going to put two hundred on me this weekend. Up until Sunday, I was. Yeah. Sunday brought us both undone. Big time. Going into Sunday, I was going really well, and then Sunday happened, and it wasn't bad for my players, but it was very good for a lot of other super coaches, namely those who brought in Blaze Taloni. Yeah, mm. I – Sunday uh, – I'd say Sunday brought you undone. I don't think I ever got tied up this weekend. I was fucking <laughs> undone from the start. But, you yeah, really I thought were. you were going to really pulverise me this weekend. So I'm actually No, but the pulverisation was just me, so that's fine. Yep, yeah. You're welcome, yeah. both of you. And, you, Timmy, uh, to use your own words, you're only as good as your last head-to-head. You both lost your head-to-head oh. this weekend as well. <laughs> Who did I lose to? <laughs> you lost to Eddie. The dribblers. Oh. I lost to Eddie last week. Yeah. He got us back and, to back. And Timmy, you lost to uh, Wazabum Warren. God the, damn it, Warren. One of the ring-ins. Yeah, one of the ring What's your rank, Rue? Um, my rank <clears throat> is, that's my score, my rank is 12,470. How much you got me by? 12,155. Are you not, serious? Not proud of it, but God, I'm happy to be in front of you. It's one of them real silver lines where you go, I need to be higher than this. I need to make moves, but at least I'm beating Rue. So mm. my yeah. total score, 12,179. What's yours? <laughs> How, what, what's the difference? Was I've got you by nine points. Nine points. Sweet. That's nine so points fun. overall. That's wild. Okay, you have. Got no idea how often this happens to wow. us. I think it was one season that was. It's like you're five on a show points. together and you talk about your trades every week. But we do something different every fucking yeah. week. No, I it's hate true, everything you do. he does. He hates <laughs> everything I do. I just, it's bizarre how. If you happens. hate everything that I do, why do you copy 95 I don't fucking copy your bullshit. <laughs> it's just some of those. Where's Dallin week? in my team? I'm going to buy him for a pint of Coke this week, like I said eight weeks ago. Oh, yeah, instead you got Britain Nickra. How's that going for you? <laughs> fucking awfully. <laughs> <laughs> fucking dreadful. I'm watching him out there. I'm like, how are you scoring points? What is going hey, on? Hey, I held Dallin. I didn't play him on the weekend. And when he's 300K and everyone's buying him and I've already got him sitting there for the Warriors run, we'll see who's laughing. Did you? Oh, the Warriors run. <laughs> Fuck me. Did you trade? You haven't traded him? No, nah, I held him. I was going to sell last week and I had like, I had Tail and May who ended up coming out of my team. I had Schiller. So I was like, why trade Dallin when I can trade one of these sort of blokes who aren't playing? <laughs> And I just sort of went, look, he's down to 520K anyway, so I just wanted to hold him to hopefully be some buy period coverage. This was before the Panthers win. I do think the Warriors are going to come good, probably not to last year's level of good, but at least be a competitive top eight side down the track. And I'm like, I may as well hold him for coverage. Speaking of the maze, has a family ever given me more headaches in my entire <laughs> fucking life or what? They have not done good buys, have they? Fucking hell. Jesus, just a yeah. nightmare. Yeah. Absolute fucking nightmare. 
Kat, you got 30 trades left. I <laughs> I think we need an intervention. Yeah, probably. Well, You're a I'm, hoarder. Hoarding I, isn't healthy. I'm just uh, – we've, we've discussed this. I'm conservative in my trading choices. Uh, but I will definitely be just making trades for fun now. No. Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, How many weeks are left? Can she make – one, can she make two? No, she'll just fall short. Fuck, you You, you can make a lot of plays though. Yeah. Actually, no, she won't fall short by that much. It's around 12. No. It's only 27 weeks. She could make two yeah. a week. 15, two a week. But I have exactly yeah, two, two a week. Yeah. She made two a week from here. She's allergic to boost, so she won't use them. So yeah. she can use two a week. Get three trades through round 13, 16, 19, but still get two a week. Mm. It's outrageous. Well, you said your rankings were 12,100 and something. Mm. I'm on 11,700, but I'm at 32,000th. So there are a lot of people between us, but not many points. There's mm. still, um, like even looking at the top 1,000 ranked sides, then where Cat <laughs> is, as you said, not far behind. The uh, How do we put this in cycling terms? The peloton isn't that far ahead. The... Uh, <laughs> I don't know why and we needed it. And then put it in it. human terms for me because I'm not going to get it in fucking cycling terms. Why cycling Give me the hot terms, tip. Jimmy? The, the gap between teams is still – The two that are fucking confused. Proceed. <laughs> I don't even like cycling. I don't know why you picked it. Bizarre. Proceed. Um, the gap between top-ranked teams, it's still not much. Like a good week, like a strong week can still see you go 5, 10K in a flash. So – it definitely can. It hasn't broken away just yet is what we're getting at. Now, I want to share a little story from Magic Round. I had the honour, nay, pleasure of sitting next to SC Playbook fame Clem mm. for the uh, Manly Broncos game and um, she had Garrick, she had Cola, who both just fell <laughs> ass first into points constantly. And then came the moment where Pay- Payne Haas limped off and the entire room we were in, whether you're a Bronco fan or anyone from New South Wales, you, the whole room just fell silent. And we were all going, oh, my God, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Anyway, I turned to Clem and she'd had a few sherbets. She was enjoying herself. <laughs> and Clem just eyeballed me and goes, he'll be right. And I was like, Clem, shut the fuck up. <laughs> I just watched my life fall apart in front of me. This is the one team I support in New South Wales. We're already fucked. Now we've lost our best friend in forward and she's looking at me and goes, he'll be right, don't worry. And I was like, Jesus, I'm not even going to respond to that. And then 10 minutes later, he runs back onto the field. The whole room celebrates and Clem turns to me and goes, I told you he'd be right. Mm. I was like, this is unfucking believable As he got carried off the field, Clem is living proof that manifestation of positive energy and positive vibes are a good thing because she's the most positive human being on the planet and she was just like, if she said that he's gone – he would have been 12 weeks out. But she said, nah, he'd be sweet. It was incredible. Yeah. Wow. It was, yeah, annoyed the living shit out of me, but incredible, <laughs> unbelievable. I met her for the first time as well over the weekend. She's Lovely one of the lady. greats. Yeah. yeah. She's a ripper. Yeah. She said some shit about you guys, but other than that. <laughs> I actually don't believe that <laughs> yeah. at all. She doesn't have it in her to say it. doesn't have it in her. No fucking way. <laughs> um, all right, let's have a look at our beers and break-evens. Winner for this week. Uh, make sure you send your score, screenshot, and everything, your address, where you live, uh, to beers and break evens at gmail.com. I've got all your emails. We're waiting for Steeden to ship over our beers and break evens footballs. We've got some hats that are ready to go. We might start to uh, chuck them on the melon next week. Yeah. We've got uh, two sets of hats, one that says weekly winner on it, uh, and the other ones that don't. We might be selling some to you. So brace yourself for that over the next few weeks. But our top point scorer this week is Matthew, who coaches the Misfits. Now, have we seen the Misfits before? Have they popped up previously? Have they been at the top of the – kind of rings a bell to me. It ring a bell to it, anyone yeah, else? It, rings a bell it to does me. ring a bell. Yeah, I think they might have been uh, relevant. Might have scored last, it last year. Yeah, maybe. Um, so, yeah, shout out to them. Matthew, Send through your name, your address, that's where you reside, to beersandbreakevens at gmail.com because I can't guess. Uh, and shout out to Slippery, which is coached by Martin, who's first overall, um, and a content creator, Savs, in 13th, who was working his dick to the bone up mm. there at Magic Round just quietly. So you get a little interview? Yeah. Yeah, mate. Well, would have done good numbers on that one. 100%. No doubt. Um, We've got the top three overall ranked in our Beers and Break Evans League and seven of the top 
10 ranked overall. So absolutely firing. We will be shutting off that group. I'll be screenshotting the entrance. <coughs> There's about 7,000 people in there, possibly 10,000. Uh, so I'll be screenshotting them next week at the start of round 13, the start of the buy period. So if you're not in, give up. Uh, $6,000 up for grabs, free to enter. So, Matt, if you don't, code is 339640. Mate, there's 13,000 people in that. Yeah. You're yeah. going to be screenshotting for a month. I'm actually starting when we finish recording. You're going to yeah. run out of memory on that dog, yeah. dog and bone of yours. <laughs> um, all right. So, shout out to Matthew, I want to say your name was. Well done, mate. Very, very good. Um, okay. Should we get into... Team list Thursday. Oh, we've got last week's winner too, which we forgot to mention. The Raging Rhinos, coached by Ryan. So no, that was, a, what? I'm just reading what's on the sheet. Last yeah. week, Raging Rhinos. Last that, week, that was you haven't up, that sheet's not updated from last week, mate. Jesus Christ! That I go was away. Last week. I go away for one fucking week, and you two just send the whole place into disarray. It's unbelievable. Speaking of good numbers, me and Rando had record numbers on last week's show. <laughs> record numbers, <laughs> fucking please. <laughs> Shout out to Rando too. Appreciate you always, brother. Very, very good. Okay, Teamless Tuesday? Yep. Let's do the damn thing. Dogs v Dragons in a Thursday night blockbuster. Canterbury, Salmon on the edge, Curran on the bench. Tim, Curran, I don't want to make this personal, but he's really pissing me off. From a draft and classic perspective. Yeah, I'm not as concerned. I would be if I had him in the 2RF, but it's just such a dead zone front row that I don't mm. really care. Like, what did he finish with? He's, he's gone 48. 48 and 44 the last two weeks. He had 46 in base on the weekend. Cannot jag an attacking stat. Like, at the Warriors, he he was scoring tries for fun and setting yeah. them up and offloading. <laughs> He's just playing an up and down front row forward role for the dogs, isn't he? Um, minutes, 57 on the weekend. So they were good, 44 the week before. As I said, at front row. He played 57 minutes on the weekend? Yep. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I can work with that. Yeah, That's 48 okay. points. I'm like, okay. I don't give a shit about the front row, to be honest. If my front rows can just be knocking out 45 to 50 each week, I can live with it. Yeah, fair shout uh, for the doggies, JDB at 13, Eisenhuth on the edge, Lelua on the bench. Nothing to really touch on in that game? No. Friday, 6 p.m., another blockbuster. Cowboys and the West Tigers going head-to-head. A replay of the 2005 GF. For the Cowboys, nothing to really talk about here. Kyle Felt on the extended, which would hurt anyone that owns Braden Burns in draft. <laughs> Um, I've got Kyle Feld though, so we'll deal with it. Uh, for the Tigers, Matamua in jersey 13. That's their fifth lock, for, lock forward in five weeks. Bit of musical chairs. When will the music stop, Kat? I ask you, when will Benji stop the music? I don't know, man. The no look decision at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yes, fuck yes, mad. Heaps into that. Uh, Felity and Casey in the centres for the West Tigers. Nothing there, surely. Oh, I've got something, mate. There's always Go, something. hit me. What do you got for uh, me? Samuel Lafayette limped I off the field it. last Yeah. Limped off last week and uh, looked pretty bad. I don't own him. And he has not. Do you own him? No. Nah. I feel sorry for owners because, like, they've been unlucky. Between, like, limping off injured and I think he's had maybe Simbin, maybe HIA or something. He just. It's just not happening. I've had him mm. like on in my black book to pick up at some point. I'm like, he doesn't even look like being a buy, but he still could be at some he point. He still could be at some point. He can't yeah. take an attacking staff, but anyway, he's been named, so encouraging for owners. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's played lock yet, but if not, he probably plays there next week, so one to keep an eye on. Uh, Manly Storm, Brookvale, Oval. Uh, for the Manly Seagulls, nothing huge here. Jason Saab back in. Uh, Lockie Croker still not there. I want to wish Lockie Croker all the very best. It's been a few weeks now, oh, Three in it? a row. I know. Yeah. And that I... I followed that one closely for a few reasons. Firstly, uh, no Lockie from his Canberra days, um, Crookwell boy, absolute legend of a man. But Carl Lawton's always one that I'm like, I've just been waiting for an opportunity and being like, it could be super coach relevant at some point, just needs the regular time. And he's gone three weeks in a row starting. Yeah. But, it's, um, but yeah, three weeks for Lockie with that head knock, so hopefully he's all right. Hopefully he's all sweet. Uh, for the Melbourne Storm, Munster out. Jerome Hughes back in, um, like from the most – I have nothing to back this up whatsoever, but I'm surprised he's back so quickly. I thought he was going to be out a little bit longer. I'm not convinced he'll play. Yeah, to be okay, honest. Right. I, I reckon I I did an early mail like Team Jan Sunday night or Monday morning, and 
when I got to the storm and the halves, I was like, I literally just wrote, Craig Bellamy's going to have to get creative in the halves because I they've got Pezzard out, mm. Munster out, Hughes probably out. I mean, he could play this week. And I was like, who else is there to play in there? So I wonder if he's just named him and gone, let's work this out later in the week. Yeah, let's work it out later. Fair shout. Uh, Super Saturday, I think I'll be down there at this one. Uh, we've got the Raiders and the Roosters, 3 p.m. at GIO Stadium for the Durs. Emre Gula comes in. Uh, no Josh Papali'i suspended for the Roosters. Manu back in. Watson out. And I feel so sorry for Connor. I just – I do wonder – and like we, we did predicted origin teams yesterday and we both had him as our 14, Connor Watson. I hope this isn't one we're looking at in five years' time and go, this was the one opportunity Watson had to play origin and just he got injured with a freaking throat injury the couple of days before – a week before selections. It's, mate, he has been so fucking unlucky. Mate, oh, like, it's round 12. It was t- 10 weeks ago I was standing in Vegas with him after he'd missed the Roosters 17 mm. for yeah. round one. It's fucking unlucky. And the way that he's, yeah, <laughs> I feel so sorry for Connor. Um, mate, the relationship between Nat Butcher and Trent Robinson needs to be studied. This is fucking bizarre. What's going on? I like, have no idea. But just everything at... And you can't really knock the Roosters because they're flying, but he just – Robbo's just chopping and changing everything. And I, I guess when you've got the amount of depth the Roosters have got, you can probably just afford to do it and give like spells, but Nat between edge and bench and dropped and block and all sorts of things. It's bizarre. Uh, yeah. it's. I mean, reading the bench, if they do run out as named, reads pretty well for Terrell May mm. because uh, Nafu White starting at lock – Radley on the edge now. Yeah, Sandon Smith will play, spend time at hooker. Egan Butcher probably doesn't play huge minutes. Spencer Lenny never been a big minute forward. So Reed's all right for Terra May. Yeah, I don't mind it. Uh, and <laughs> Cheese obviously back at nine. Have you got Cheese in your thing later or anything or not? I don't, but I spoke about him last night. Very cheap. He's cheaper than what I thought he'd be. He's 370K because of Connor Watson, who's beaten him to the starting hook roll in minutes mm. in recent weeks. So – the last two weeks, he's played 36 and 23 minutes for scores of 24 and 14. Break even of <laughs> 77. He, like, if he goes back to a 55, 60 minute hooker roll, covers around 13 and 16, he's dirt cheap. Yeah, something to consider for sure. Yeah. Um, Sharks, Penrith. Uh, Sharkies, 1 to 17. Nothing to really touch on here. Penrith, you've got Peach out, Garner out, Liam Henry and the sort of guys back in. Anything to talk about here? Uh, not really. I will be at this fixture. So there you go. You're going to the Penrith Sharkies game? Yeah, it's in Cronulla. Mm, interesting. Yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, there I am down in Canberra just doing the hard yards, getting out there to support the Durs. You're supporting your beloved Roosters, mate. You're not hiding this from anyone. Mate, I'm supporting my brother at 11 a.m. and then I'm <laughs> supporting the greatest game of all, rugby league. And then Saturday night you're supporting Mooseheads. Yeah, and then uh, also shout out to the Raiders. I'm waiting for the call to see if I want to blow the horn on Saturday. So phone's on loud. Make the decision. If you get asked to blow that horn before I do. I, I'll tell you what, it again. would make me so happy. Uh, so happy. It would be unreal. I'm still seething at the Bulldogs. And I had a crack at Adam Drusy last night that you got sent an 04 Doggies jersey before I did. I'm like, in what world? I can almost guarantee that wasn't Darussi's decision. It but wasn't that Darussi's. Nah. But I still razzed him about yeah, it. Yeah, no, I backed that 100%. <laughs> How is Darussi? Is he going all right? Yeah, he's the world's busiest man. Yeah, he's right up yeah, there. Yeah, but he's uh, he's going well. He, he was on the podcast last night. So Doggy's, Doggy's chairman for any of for those listening at home, mate, he's an upbeat, happy bloke. <laughs> Had him in last night. He was shattered from the loss on the weekend. Yeah. He just kept shaking his head every time we'd bring it up and he just goes – we let it slip. He goes, I can't believe we lost that game. <laughs> Poor bastard. Yeah. Tough, tough, tough. All right, South V Eels, 7.35 on Saturday night. Uh, for the Rabbitohs, White moves to 5'8". Tane back in the centres. Uh, Cody Walker at halfback, host on the edge. Keon Colomitangi at 13. A lot of changes for South Sydney. I, I don't know if I love this for Cody Walker. Agreed. And people are eyeing him off in that 5'8 slot this week. Of course, Dylan Brown getting dual half at 5'8 status. So the ability to move him to half back, it opens up a lot of 5'8 options for those holding Nathan Cleary, Sean Johnson, Jerome. I mean, you would be selling Jerome Hughes. Also, for the record, would not be selling Sean Johnson if I owned. But certainly Cleary owners. Um, firstly, with Cody Walker, he's still in the origin frame. Despite yep. the way the bunnies are going, he's in the origin frame. So 
consider that when you think about your trades. But at seven, he'll move. <coughs> pardon me. We assume to the right side of the field. Good on the right. Way better on the left. And just doing all the organising, it just doesn't bode well for him, does it? I don't love it. The only thing is that it is Indigenous round. I know Cody will be up for this game, 100%. But like, he'll get a lot of touches, is there anything, but he kind of already gets a lot of touches, doesn't he? Yeah, yeah. He, yeah. So, yeah, I don't love it. Um, for the Parramatta Eels, Ryan Madison back on the edge. Outside of that, no big changes there. Blaze still at fullback. What do you reckon Blazers' chances are of holding on to this one jersey? We sort of spoke about in the green room the other day. What do you reckon? Decent. Decent. It all depends how Gutho is on return mm. because, like, Gutho, as it stands right now, is still your fullback. The other thing is Blaze can also play centre. He played Just there can't the defend. End. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think they're doing him a disservice playing him at centre personally. Put it this way. Like, if – I think they're a better team with Gutho at centre than and having Blaze at fullback than the other way around. Yeah, and we know I'm a sucker for like if you're going to play a good player at centre, they need to roam. Gutho will roam like no centre has ever roamed more yep. in his life. So I, th- I think it could really work. I think there's legs in it. Yeah. Uh, I think he'd be probably pretty good defensively. He'd have to spend some time getting that read right. But he's played certainly a lot of wing in the past. Yep. I assume he's probably slotted in at centre at stages. Um, I think he played centre in Origin. Yeah, he did too. Yeah. Yeah. Um, got carved up, I think. Um, <coughs> so, look, power of 14. He was wearing a blue jersey, so. <laughs> yeah. Fucking me. Yep. Power of 14. So, if they come out and lose the next couple of weeks, and don't get me wrong, they should probably be winning this game, but very danger game for them. If they sit there and go in two weeks' time, they've lost two in a row, and then Gutho comes back and their season's basically done, you go, let's just play Blaze at fullback because he's, he's been outstanding. Yeah. Uh, Sunday games, Broncos, Titans, another Queensland derby. Reese Walsh back in, Smithy at 14, no Katoni Staggs. For the Titans, Tony Francis uh, makes his debut on the wing. Very excited to see him go. Uh, Pahulu starts in the front row, who I test to me. Looks really good. I like the look of him. Uh, Super catch stats probably don't suggest that he's going to go gangbusters, but I think he's just one to keep uh, an eye on. Yeah, we had a little look this week. I would love – at some point, to be able to get rid of Poisson Pharmacilli and get in a cheapy front row forward that can make 200K and more than that, just be playable if need be. Like, I'm just waiting for Touchwood, like Terrell May and Josh Curran in my front row. They've been available for the last month since I've had that combination. Mm. I've got Sam Hughes there who's playable, but there's going to be a time, particularly with all these buyers coming up, where I'm going to be short a front row or something. Like I'm going to lose two of them and I'm going to have him sitting there. So if you could get a, someone like a Pahula who's playing 40-odd minutes and punching out, it only has to be 40 to 45, maybe a bit of coin, I'd be willing to do that trade. Yeah. But you'd have to be pretty certain of it. So Pahulu, break even 19, 247K. He's only scoring at 0.89 points per minute. I was a bit surprised when I saw that he'd averaged 30 minutes per game already. Mm. So, look, he'd probably have to get to that 40 to 45-minute mark because Jamie Joel's out for like three months. Yeah. But, look, you play this week, then he has the buy. So we get a look at him this week and we can consider him for 14. I'll tell you what, there is no player in the competition that uh, pays less rent in my head than Farmer Silly. But when you mention him every two or three weeks, yeah. God, it just puts a smile on my face. Oh, yeah. One less headache I haven't had to fucking deal it's with. It's incredibly how, like, how identical he is to Franklin Pelé in every way last yep. year. Yeah. Probably slightly less frustrating. Huh. I, I, you know what else? At least I don't look at Farmer Silly and go, you could be an immortal maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I could be wrong here. Please feel free to correct me if I am. I reckon when you're in Vegas and Xavier Willison was dropped out of the team, I reckon if you're aware of that and you didn't screw up, I reckon you got Farmer Silly in just to throw out that extra cash because there was no one else. And I reckon he'd still be sitting in your team. But instead you had Willison who made 200K or so. Thoughts? Um, there was no one else, hence why I got him. Yeah, you might be right. Yeah. I had Willison 
And then when he dropped out on okay, sweet, I'll get Farmer Steely because at least he's playing. He was starting. I'll be honest with you, I don't remember much from Vegas, especially what my third choice front row forward yeah, options were going to be. So, sure, let's run with it. Uh, last game of the week, Waz v Finn over there at Go Media Stadium for the Warriors. Wade Egan out, Lussick at nine, Dill Walker at 13. Nick Corey returns on the ad. Edge, Chanel Harris to Vita on the extended. I'll tell you what, I feel incredibly <coughs> sorry for Roach, who came in and played 68 minutes or something mm. at Hooker on the weekend, had an absolute blinder, and then dropped out of the side altogether, the poor bastard. With Wade Egan out. Bizarre. Yeah, I just want to know that. I was more looking at Wade Egan out because you own him. Do you? Yeah, I do, yeah, yeah. yeah. Shout out to I was at the Warriors jersey flag two weeks ago in Auckland. I was there like 45 minutes before that game kicked off to watch some warm up. And I was standing there in the training fields and me and my old man were standing there and he was just talking to some guy in a Warriors polo for five or ten minutes. I wasn't really in the conversation. I was just watching Josh warm up. He spoke to this guy in this polo for like five or six minutes and whatnot, blah, blah, blah. It was there early. He was just doing what he could to help out. Um, it was fucking roach. Oh, really? Yeah, he just, just showed up to the stadium. Like, like he, he wasn't playing New South Wales car, wasn't playing flag, obviously. Just showed up to help out and just do his bit. And I, I remember looking at him going, fuck, I know you from somewhere, but I couldn't work out where. Then I'm sitting there watching the Warriors game the other day and he runs on the field. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's who it was. Champion fella, really nice guy, right? Because he's pretty small, eh? Yeah, he's a small – there's yeah. not much to him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, like, I, I, I sort of assumed he was like – an extra player in their flag squad. Yeah. And then he runs yeah. out against the Penrith Panthers and plays 70 <laughs> minutes on the weekend. No, no, kills you're, it. you're a dude who's about to tail up the Panthers. 100%. Yeah, yeah, good on him. Shout out to him. I think he's been hard done by. All right. Let's have a look at Blue Wealth Property, our partners in crime for season 2024. We have got Thursday, the 30th of May, Wealth Through Property. That's live in southern Sydney. Uh, that's uh, in Hurstville, 6.30 p.m. There is a link in the description down below to have a look at that. Learn everything you need to know about building wealth through property and how Blue Wealth uses a research process to identify the best investment for your financial future. The best time to buy a property was 20 years ago. The second best time is now. Blue Wealth <laughs> can help you make it happen. They've also got a special pop-up event Thursday, May 23rd at 12 p.m. Uh, that is, you can get that via webinar as well. Uh, what, where are we at in the property cycle and what's in store for the remainder of 2024? And then we've got Thursday, the 6th of June, helping your kids into the property market. That's live at Blue Wealth HQ out there at Sydney Olympic Park. Or you can get it via the webinar mm. at 6.30 p.m debunking the myth that your kids will never be able to afford to buy a property. What's your favourite, like, myth that's ever been debunked? Or, or maybe one that hasn't been debunked yet? That is a huge question. I know, spot. yeah, massive, massive. It just got me thinking. Like, you are a Loch Ness Monster sort of operator. Uh, yeah, what, what, what are we thinking? I debunked... Um Last week, the Johnny Manu glue hands you weren't on the show. I was a bit disappointed about that because I thought you'd enjoy that conversation. Did you listen to it? Uh, no, I didn't. But I did. Was thinking about it during the week that we've probably got to fall on our sword there a little bit with yeah. well, Joey Manu. I still think when he gets to fullback, he'll do the exact same thing. But we'll see. Well, it was not so much saying that it it was true at a point in time. But over the last season and a half, it, he's gotten it out of his game. He's actually a freaking awesome mm. winger, like centre to play outside of. So, um, no, glad you tuned into the show last week, mate, but that's cool. Um, <laughs> no myths, that, Timmy. Yeah. My head was hurting enough last week, mate. Yeah. Um, there was some, I did you, a, you better have a good myth ready. I, I, I did a real deep dive into it and I was like, you know, girl will be happy with this one, but then you didn't turn up and didn't listen. Here we are. Um, Kat, you go because myth on the spot. I'm gonna myth, go. I'm gonna go with uh, the theories. Or oh, it's more conspiracy theory, but let's call yeah, it a myth. Done. Yeah. That like Tupac and my MJ that they're uh, alive and yeah, that they okay. just they've gone anonymous. They're now, living in Cuba or something. Yeah, yeah. Or probably you know Mexico. Mexico. I'm I do dabble in the conspiracy side of things. Yeah. So don't get me started. So, like, as do I. I'm that's a, a whole, that's a whole episode. If you guys ever want us to do a little true crime deep dive, 
a lot of our conversations during the day are about that stuff because you love it, Guru. But yeah, I think uh, I'd love to. I'd love to find out that one of these guys has just been alive this whole time. I'd love one of them to be true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it'd be unreal. That was actually explained to me prior to the show about um, why the Earth is flat. Oh, he, yeah. Um, <laughs> Matty Burton over yeah, there. Yeah, Matty Burton and I are good mates. <laughs> we talk about flat Earth all the time. Uh, I was going to add as well on the Blue Wealth side of things, wasn't it cool to chat with the Dolphins boys? They're so young and we asked them mm. what's some of the stuff that is really important to you now that you're coming through <laughs> first grade and – Oren Keely really emphasised that financial literacy was really important and that he was making it a real um, focus, I suppose, to learn how to spend his money now that overnight you start just making so much more that you've got to know what to do with it. And Blue Wealth had actually spoken to them and I thought that was cool. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they gave Tony and the team a big rap. Speaking of uh, Tony, <laughs> no ankle, um, we saw him – at Magic Round, mm, out the fine. front of our Abracababra, where all dreams <laughs> come true on the Caxton Street. Is that where you saw him? Of course, that's where we. Where <laughs> else would we see Tony Hayek? <laughs> Abracababra, one hundred percent. So it was good to see you, mate. Um, oh, he would have got up to some debauchery over the weekend. Yeah, he would have. We saw him after the Raiders had the doggies, and there was an absolute clan of him. Saw his young fella there. Doggies jerseys, loud and proud, and they were trying to tell me that the dogs run lucky. I'm like, please, we've oh, 11 blokes. Fucking miss me. <laughs> Absolutely miss me. Uh, but we've got all the links for Blue Wealth in the description below, guys. Go check them out. Go sign up. We've got in a few weeks' time uh, the couple that has a, one of the couples that has brought a property over the last year or so via Blue Wealth property. Uh, so making special things happen there. All right. Tim's start deep. deep. Dive, 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 dive. <laughs> Take it away. We've got Harry Grant, the wizard. <laughs> Harry Grant, do this dive each and every year because it is one of the most relevant conversations and the fact that he just tunned up, had his biggest score of the season, uh, couldn't have been more timely. People are flocking to him this week. 665K, so he's very affordable, break even of 46. Uh, how does he perform during the buy period? Because what is not a myth is that in recent years, always starts the season quite well. He's regressed this year, at least to start the season, finishes the season well, but during the bye period, you know, does he play lesser minutes? Does his scores reduce? Four games during the origin period last season that he played, he had scores of 34, 123, 48 and 73. Rather than sort of average them out, I put them all there because it shows that the 130-23 sort of really is an outlier. Mm -hmm. 34 and a 48 there. <laughs> Melbourne weren't flying at the time. They were going okay and sort of fighting for the sort of top eight, top four. So he averaged 77 minutes during that period. I don't believe that he will average the same minutes during this period because they're doing well and they've got more hooking options. I just think he, he'll still play good time but not as high. In 2022, during the origin period, he had a five-game average of 58.8. So like well below what you want for a bloke whose chances of getting rested and less a minute. So... I just think the fact that he'll miss games through Origin, he's a chance of getting rested. I'm not. I don't think he's a buy. Devil's advocate. Yeah. Good hooking options. You said. What, yeah. what are we talking? Are we talking Bronson Garlic? Because Wishart's going to have to play sorry, in the half. Hooking. Or they have hooking options. What do you mean? Like they like they've got people that can play there. Probably yeah, Garlic or something. Yeah. Well, it have to be Garlic because Wishart's going to be playing in the yeah. halves. I, does Harry Grant being the Melbourne Storm captain, does that – do you reckon that pushes him to play anymore? They're going to run with Ben Hunt. He's only going to play, I would say, maximum 55 minutes in yep. origin games if there's no injuries or anything. Uh, I'm not buying him or anything. I'm, I'm simply just playing devil's advocate. I mm. can I can understand people's logic mm. buying him. I think as well – I don't know. Sometimes I feel like with Harry Grant when he plays – 50 minutes, he can be he more fucking ham. damaging yeah. than 80. I'll, I'll pay that. It's – and, I mean, their, their pack's doing better than it has in probably three mm. years, I would argue. Uh, once again, not buying him, just playing devil's advocate. I can understand why people are doing it. Yeah, yeah, no, very fair, mate. Um, I can see – yeah, I, I, and that's it's a good way to put it. Like, I don't think it's a bad buy by mm. any means, but I'm not doing it. I'm not interested Yeah, I'm in not it. doing it either, yeah. I just I, – I look at all the options that people have at Hooker. It's like Reese Robson's ticking along fine. Yeah. 
Harry, for starters, hasn't been that great. But Appy Coruscant, who a week ago were like a three-round average of 36, went big on the weekend, got the goal kicking back, could miss origin, plays around 16 and 19. Like, he's a hold. Yep. Jaden Braley, he's back to his 80-minute role by the looks of it. Hopefully, like, he's a hold and has good coverage early um, through origin period. I'm just like, who would people be moving to him? Like, if you've got, like, a Joey Lusick there still, maybe you could flip him to him, but... Yeah, but no, but it's a good point on like, you know, captaincy, plays out injured in the spine. Maybe he does play decent minutes, but yeah, I just I wouldn't be buying him. Yeah. All right, let's talk about the Jerringong Lion, Tyrant Wishart, uh, who's one that I am kind of looking at this week. I haven't really said it yet, but my trades are in absolute fucking disarray. I think I'm just going to sit on my hands for the next few weeks. Wishart is one that I <clears throat> did have a little sneaky peek at. Talk to me. This one came onto my radar on Friday in the Uber from the airport. And did I dribble in your ear about Wishard all over the weekend? Yeah, I think you did I at did. some point. Yeah, okay. yeah. And I'm a sucker for Tyron Wishard. I'm yeah, a fucking okay. sucker well, for him. I'm, I'm very keen to get your thoughts here because Wishart's someone I'm keen on this week. But it's one that I like, but I do, I do want reinforcement. So here we go, Rue. Owned by 3.5% of the top 10% of overall ranked super coaches. Munster out long term, would you agree locked into that 5-8 spot? Yes. There's no one else, hey? It's Pezzett's injured. Yeah. There's literally no one else. I, I actually think he's a better ball player than Pezzett too. But yeah. anyway. Yep. He's 381K, break even of negative seven. He's dual 5-8 halfback. Who else is dual 5-8 halfback, Rue? Highly owned. Yeah, not many. Dill Brown. Oh, yeah, Dill Bags. Yep. yep. So the ability to interchange those two between the halves with dual positioning, lit. Five 80-minute games in the halves across the last two years. The big one I want to take note of here is his base in mm. the halves. So last week against the Eels, only scored 40, 26 in base. Okay, not his best outing, but a lot Which of points. Still for a halfback, 26. Yeah. yeah I'll we'll, take that because yeah. I know it gets better. Oh, yeah. Tell me more. Oh, <laughs> Round 10. Just a fortnight ago against the Sharks. Again, they lost. 85 points, 38 in base. 38. It can't get better than that. Oh, but it You can't do better than that, T-Rex. Are you in my article? <laughs> no, I'm just looking at the stats. <laughs> Ra- <laughs> Round three versus the Knights. 84 points with 41 in base. Stop the fight. But it's, got, it's only happened this year. Like, it can't have happened yet. Or has it? 2023, two games, 80 minutes in the halves. Round 27 against the Broncos. This was the game where, to be fair, both teams mass rested. 78 points, 40 in base. Wow. Round two last year against the Bulldogs. Just the 40 points, but 30 in <coughs> base. You add on top of that the power in base, the power on top of his base. He bust tackles, he runs, he's in a gun storm team. I'm tempted. Yeah, I'm very tempted. I, um, I really wish he was playing round 13. Yeah. Is the only thing I don't love. The, the only thing is like – But that's not – I'm pretty good for round 13, so that's not a deciding I understand. Factor. I don't really care about round 13. Like I'm actually set up well for round 16 too. And look, by coverage-wise, it's not the best. Like I wish he was playing round 19. Yep. But oh, I just think he's a very playable bloke that like if I were to go Nathan Cleary to him, I can free up a ton of money – for a big trade elsewhere, I'm happy to play him each week. And I think they're scoring upside. Let me ask you this. Mm. I am tossing up this week as my only trade going Nathan Cleary to someone to free up some cash. Mm. I am looking at Wishart mm. at, what was it, 380K? Yeah. The other option I'm looking at is Jack Cole. Now, Jack Cole, I'm just having a look. It looks like Bradley Schneider is expected to miss another four weeks. What are your thoughts there? Jack yeah. Cole, not as playable in my opinion, but not a train wreck. But he's also – he's the starting – I don't know if you're named at six or seven, but starting halves – Regardless, yeah, yeah. doesn't matter. Yeah, for the best team in the competition, mm. like at 209K. Like yep. it, it has the potential to be a masterstroke. Like you've seen more of Jack Cole than I have. I really like him. Yeah, and he's a ball running 5'8", hey? Yes, yeah, yeah. 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 That's what you want. Like mm. he's going to get opportunities behind this pack. Covers around th- – again, it's a 
it's, it's a terrible buy period um, schedule in terms of he covers 13. Don't re- When I say don't really need it, it's still very handy, but it's not the one we need. Yeah. How's the buy around 16 and 19? He won't help you there. But at that price, mate, I I like it. If Schneider's gone for a month plus. Wishart, Cole. I like Wishart. Yeah, I like Wishart, but like 180K is a lot of money. A lot of biggie. Yeah. Oh, decisions to be made. Wish I had 30 trades. Is there a world where Wishart ends up on the bench anytime soon? So, like, I, I'm probably sure it probably won't happen, but if Farlogo comes out and kills it this week against Manly, come to round 14, 15, Pappenhausen comes back, could Pappy come back via the halves with Munster out? Do you think- I hate this suggestion. Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't get it from people. I don't. I, I don't think so, no. I, I think Wishy is locked into that halves role, personally. Okay, but, right. I, I agree, yeah. but I was just, just checking yeah. I You know, I, I, I think Wishart's pretty safe, yeah. in my opinion. Um, all right, Isaac Tungo, right centre, Penrith Panthers. No Nathan Cleary, talk to me. Isaac Tungo is a bloke there who has one of the best base in the game for a CT dub, in the best team in the competition – he bust tackles, he offloads, he does everything. He scores tries. I'm like, why does he not average 75, 80? Why is he not among the elite CT dubs? The more you look at Isaac Tungo, the less you find out. I it's can't, bizarre. I can't put my finger on it. And yeah. Let us know in the comments, but please let us know why. So I've just gone through his numbers in recent years because he becomes relevant now. He's one that I was sort of eyeing off as a potential little pod um, for round 13 and through the buy period. Because he has bottomed out in price, or not quite, break even at 96, but going to be very cheap again next week. He's having 34 in base. He scored 30-plus in base in all bar one game this season. That was a sin bidding against the Rabbitohs a couple of weeks ago. This season he scored five tries, 10 line breaks, 41 tackle breaks, but he's averaging 60 points. You take out his 145 against the Eels, that was the game where there was an Injury early on at centre, and I think he had Kelma to a lungy yes, or something move. Yep. So he scored 145. You take that out, he's averaging 52.5. His other ton was the week after when the Broncos same had an thing. injury. Same thing happened. 14 games last season, he averaged 68.4. Like, that's good scoring, don't get me wrong. But in 14 games, he had 10 tries, 5 tries, his 52 tackle breaks, 36 in base. He still only averaged 68. I'm like... Why is he not an 8, 75, 80 averaging centre? And it's even more bizarre when you think about the way the Panthers play. Like the left centre never gets the ball. No. The ball's seemingly it. always going to the right. It's bizarre. Yeah, he, he's a bit of an uh, – like I, as you all know, I fucking love yeah. Isaac Tungo. But he's a bit of an, an enigma when it comes to super coach. Like even in my draft comp, he gets picked up really early each season. Everyone loses their mind. I'm like, fuck, there's going to be headaches around mm. that dude, man. They're always – he's, he's, he's a little bit frustrating Something super coach-wise. And there, there will be times where you pick him up and you absolutely nail it and he's going to fly. But I don't know, he's sort of just on my too hard basket yeah. list. Yeah, he has his runs and we'll have runs where he'll go ton, ton. Yeah. And everyone will flock to him and then he'll go 40, 40. Yeah. With yeah. 45 in base. Talking to me about Cody Walker, mate. Uh, playing halfback this week, as you said earlier, Jackie Boy, why don't you would assume mm-hmm. that he plays left? I think Cody will play right. I think he'll play both sides of the ruck. My worry is that the left side's obviously going to be their strike side. You've got Jack down there. You've also got Latrell, who just steals everyone's points mm. on the left-hand side. I can't deal with Cody. I also he, – he'd be my origin 5'8", and this injury to Connor Watson might – it might end up forcing Burton to the 14 potentially mm. as well, which could get Cody in there. Burton could play centre. Cody could play 5'8". There's just – Nah, it, it's a hard pass from me, but what are your thoughts? Yeah, first things first, wait till next week because of origin selections yeah. and see what happens there, um, which is hard because with the matchup against the Eels at the moment, it's, you know, he, in the Indigenous round, as you mentioned, he could go big. Yeah. Um, I just – season high 99 last week, caught the eye of a lot. Yeah. He's only averaging 54, pretty ordinary year. And if, well, what did he score last week? Sorry, 99. 99. Yeah. If you're a sucker for Isaac Tungo, I'm a sucker for Cody Walker. Yeah. Went through his stats. In his last five games, he's had seven try assists, seven line break assists and a try for a 59-point average. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot for a little. And then you add in a Bunnies team that are in a shambles. Yeah. 
Uh, so, yeah, look, it wouldn't surprise me one bit if he comes out and goes ton-ton because ton, to- Cody Walker's a gun. But looking at numbers and just even – not even the eye test on Cody because he's been all right, but the bunnies themselves, yeah, ugh, it's, hard, yeah. it's hard to go near. Yeah, I can't. Yeah, hard pass from me. Uh, last man on our list – the great and powerful Lockie Galvin, who I keep looking at my supercoach side. Every time I see him, I go, oh, you're still here. Happy to have you, but um, I, 5A just sucks. 5A just sucks so much that I'm happy just to run with Galvin at the moment. Talk to me. Yeah, and that's exactly what this is about, mate. So Lockie Galvin, we, we spoke about the halves and how halfback and 5'8 have been just an awful position this year, in particular 5'8. Yeah. Halfback's had its moments. We've got this 18-year-old in one of the worst teams in the competition just plugging away, doing a job. And I'm the same. All season I've been like, oh, I'll upgrade Galvin at some point before the buyers once he peaks in price yeah. and I'll find the bloke. At no point have I gotten to a week where I've gone, do I make the Galvin move? So he has terrific buy coverage, plays around 16 and 19, the two hardest buy rounds. <laughs> He's basing – so – he scored 45 plus in all games bar one. What game do you reckon that one was, Rue? I'm going to say the Penrith Panthers. Correct. 35. Bang, money. 35 against the Panthers, which even that, like 35 against the Panthers, you take that. It's a good knock, yeah. Um, basing 31. So, mate, the, he's averaging 57 with no tries and only four try assists. Now, as an 18 year old, I don't sit here and go, oh, more tries are going to come, heaps more try assists are going to come, but they're not going to get any less, put it that way. Um, yeah, I just I think he's a hold through to round 20. Yeah, what does he, he play 16 and 19? You know what yeah. else I like about him, mate? And you'll be able to talk more about it, but I'm looking forward to seeing him back with Aiden Caesar, too. Yeah, I think mean, that'll help him for massively. sure. Um, because then he, it, you know, very similar to when Jack played his best footy with Caesar, it'll just be run, run, yeah. run. Um, so, yeah, yeah, if round 13 isn't a drama for you, which I imagine for most of you it isn't, <laughs> I can see myself holding Galvin through to. 19 plus. Yeah, and it's like, who in the world are you trading Galvin to at 5'8"? Yeah. No, mm. thank you. Uh, and uh, the, uh, like the other beauty of him is that he is absolutely no threat whatsoever, an origin pick. No. Nah. Out of the blue, he's, he's safe as houses. And, he, like um, and he's very playable in 17s, which like you think he's not, then you're like, like I had to play him last week with a few outs. He's got 79 or something. He doesn't disappoint. No. Nah. Yeah. Back it. Um, all right. Trades. Um, I'm pretty – Boring this week. I will maybe be downgrading Nathan Cleary to a Cole or a Wishart. Probably a Cole at the moment. I'll do – I might have to get uh, the great NRL physio on the uh, dog and bone <laughs> to get some reassurance there. But maybe Jack Cole, I don't know. Outside of that, mate, I, I'm i starting to get really nervous about the amount of trades we've gone through mm. or that I've gone through anyway. Um, and I want to have some in the old skyrocket for <laughs> – the back end of the season. So I'm thinking I'm going to take it a little bit easier over the next few weeks. My plan over the next few weeks, I've got numbers for round 13, round 14 that I know a few people are worried about. I'm actually okay that week. I want to save trades in the next few weeks. I want to just white knuckle it and hold on, just hope I get relevant scores. Might drop my rank a little bit, but I'm okay because I think I'll be able to gain it back at the end of the Mm. season with trades up my sleeve. I'm pretty boring, to be honest with you, this week. What, what are you thinking, mate? You, you sound like you got something pretty wet yeah. and wild to yeah. throw at us. So had an, an enormous chat on the Playbook podcast last night about that exact thing, about saving trades. People have gone way too hard. Yeah. And look, you might have set yourself up okay, but look at all the injuries. Go out, go back and have a listen to last night's episode, but just be very careful because people are going to be shot by the end of the buy period. Yeah. They're going to be gone. And look, cool, you might be top 100, top 1,000 now, but – Come round 20 when you run out of trades, you could end up 10,000th <coughs> when injuries and restings hit. Yeah. Um, for myself this week, I'm looking at over the next two weeks, two trades this week, and then we get three trades next week, four if you want to boost. I'm looking at not using any trades next week and barring like disaster with origin selections and injuries, there's no reason why I should. Mm. I should be able to save three next week pretty comfortably. I've also this week... I'm a little bit light on because I own Armstrong, Kai Piss Paul, and Jaden Braley, yep. as well as Nathan Cleary. So my team's just a little lighter. Yeah. Um, I've also ended up, because of Taylor and May last week, I ended up holding Trey Fuller. So I'm like, I've held him through last week. I might as well hold him to play next week. I used to got Trey. Yeah. So 
I reversed and went Taylor May out on Saturday and held Trey. Mm, I like that. <clears throat> yeah. So because I held him through there, I'm like, I may as well hold him for next week's bye. Um, it's got me a little bit jealous, but anyway, <laughs> proceed. Um, so what I'm looking at is Nathan Cleary to Tyron Wishart. Gives me a halves of Nico, Tyron, Dill Brown, Lucky Galvin. Sweet. I can also interchange Brown and Wishart where needed. Yep. Um, now, I'd be happy to sit on just that trade, but that gives me an absolute wicket, which leads me to my second trade where I go. Can, can I interrupt quickly? Why why Wishart over Cole for you? Just more of a long-term sort of thing or? I test, back in the gut. Yep. Base. I feel more comfortable playing Wishart in my team each week. Yep. Uh, offers better buy coverage. He plays around 16. He'll be a very valuable number for that. I don't need Cole for 13, and that's the only one he covers. Yep, fair. You know, if Schneider comes back early, does he pop in his place? So I just like Wishart. Yep. Um, I said, I'd be happy just to do that, but that gives me a, a war chest to use. <laughs> and <laughs> It's just adorable. <laughs> it's just – it's like – it's like a bunny rabbit popped in here and smelt a daffodil and had to sneeze. It's great. Well, the timing's terrible. always supreme. Sorry, it was terrible timing. Sorry, you've tried to tell us this trade yeah. six times yeah. now. <laughs> Mate, James Schiller, somehow still in my team, to Joey Manu. Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, the season's over. I love that. <laughs> Captain him, you fucking coward. I do it. apologize to all Joey Manu owners out there, but I look oh. at that trade and I just go, I have to make it. And Joey Manu, in terms of the saving trade scenario, it was a trade I was going to make next week anyway. Mm. So I'm like, well, I may as well make it this week, get him against the Raiders and then save three next week. Um, but, yeah, so... Mark it down your calendars, round 12, 2024, breaking Joey Manu for the fifth time. I fucking love this. Mm. <laughs> His hamstring looks delicious right now. Fuck, <laughs> this is so good. This is unreal. Mate, I watched that, um, the game, which I'm trying to get out of my memory, but finding it tough to uh, against the Warriors two weeks ago. Mm. As a non-Dom Young owner, as a non-Joey Manu owner, and just seeing Manu feed young, Manu feed young. Mate, you're an absolute sucker for combinations. Yeah. And I'm just like, I want a piece of that. Yeah, no, nah, it's a fair shout. And I then, like the move. And then if Teddy gets picked for origin, yeah. probably 50 50 with him and Dill Edwards at the moment. Um, Manu plays fullback. I think he becomes a must have, so I'm like, screw it. How expensive is Joseph Manu? 824, break even, 77. So he's not getting any cheaper. Is he in your plans or not? Uh, mate, honestly, it's been a real white knuckle for me over the last 10 days. So there aren't many plans, but, um, I mean, he probably should be in my place. If Teddy plays origin, I'll probably just have to. If Teddy plays origin, you have to find a way. If Teddy doesn't, you can go against him. You can, yeah. You don't feel good about it, but you can do Not it. Not at all. Yeah. Cause they've got a very soft draw, the Roosters. Mine who plays 13 and 16, no origin impact. It's just like. The fact that you've brought him in, though. <laughs> Big factor. And the fact that the Supercoach gods consistently give you a middle finger surrounding Joey Manu gets me really excited. He's your kryptonite, eh? He is my kryptonite. Mine's Nico Hines. Mm. Every time I compliment him, he goes shit. Every time I bag him, he scores <laughs> 170. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I was in the Caxton car park the other day. Blake comes up to me and goes, what do you hate Nico Hines? I'm like, oh. What is there to hate about Nico? Yeah, how could you do it? How could I? What, how could I possibly hate Nico? Isn't it? It's kind of like how they say that love and hate are literally this close to each other on on a scale because you care. So. I, I don't hate the guy. No, I just but, never get him right. Yeah, but it's it's the frustration of knowing mm. that if you are too public about your love, he'll just fail. Yeah, it's it's a tough balance. Very very tough. Um, I like the move. I love the move for content. It's great because <laughs> I am so confident something happens to Joey Mano yeah. now. Do you like my wish art move? Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. Um, I – yeah, no, I, I've, I've, I've got no issue with it. As I say, I'm considering the same thing. I just might free up a little bit more cash to go down to Cole. But if I'm sitting here in two weeks' time and fucking – 
Schneider's playing halfback, I'll be like, well, that was fucking waste of time. Yeah, well, that gives me 184K in the bank. I don't want to trade next week. And then I reckon round 14, I will go Angus Crichton to Ellie Katoa, which is going to be more money. So say that again, round 14. When Angus the... Crichton to Ellie Katoa. Do you think you hold Angus and Fafita throughout the buys or not? Um, ideally, I'd want to trade Angus Crichton next week. Yeah. But – because you'll miss around 13, 14, 16, 19. I reckon backing up from Origin with all the back rolls the Roosters have, if he's an 80-minute back row in Origin, even like 50, he either plays off the bench or they roost, roost him, um, rest him. <laughs> so I would prefer to sell him next week, but I look at him like, I don't need to bring anyone in for him next week. Yeah, okay. I want Eli Katoa through the buy period, so I'm just like round 14 makes sense. Yeah, yeah. For Fida – Plays round 14, 15, and then we'll have a get Origin again in round 16. So he 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 has that sort of same vibe as Angus Crichton from round 16. He misses 16, 17, 19. So ideally he'd be a sell, but I'm just going to have to reassess my team come around 16, how my trades are looking and all that and work out whether I do it or not. Yeah, this is where I really – I don't want to spend – Four mm. trades on those two dudes, yeah. getting them in and out. This is where fuck she's sitting in a good spot yeah. now. She can do whatever the fuck she wants. I'm not. I'm not going to look yeah. at so her. So I reckon <laughs> I'll sell Angus Crichton. The other thing is, like between them two, the Roosters can afford to rest Angus Crichton. Yeah. The Titans can't afford to rest Dave Fafita. Yeah. Yeah. Fair. Um, Kat, have you got any idea for trades this week? Have you had a look yet? I've been looking, but I'm not too sure exactly what I want to do because. Like you said, we've obviously got to consider origin period by mm. I just don't want to bring in anyone that is only going to be useful like a, for a week or two. So, And I just got Hamiso in, who, by the way, I captained and he did pretty you well. You brought Hammer in and captained And him. I captained him. Mate, we were, sitting, we, were sitting in the Uber, we were sitting in the car up to Brisbane from the Dolphins and – Remember if we're at round one when Amir gave Hamiso that huge rap and he exploded? Yeah. We got the same speech in the car. Yeah. Well, we got – yeah, so Amir, who is the head of marketing for Dolphin, oh said God. Hammer's back. He had a really good training session. He's looking really good. I'd get him in. I said, I'm not just oh going to get him in. God. I'm going to captain him as well. Yeah. Hammer. It was a real cowboy. Hammer coming back from a hamstring injury out for a month and then he misses round 13 – 14, 16, 18, but 19. That, that's what you can do when you've got 30 I, trades. Seriously. And if he came out and scored 40 on the weekend, I'd be like, Kat, you've thrown your season away, but he got 94, you captained him. Touche. Like, yeah. Yeah. that's good shit. Yeah. Oh, that's good gear. So <clears throat> my very long answer to your question is I'm not quite sure yet, but I'm willing to have some fun with it. How many boosts do you have left? Three. <laughs> I did also, yeah, I ended up saving that boost last week, so I've got it in the bank. you still got one left. Yeah. Yes. You got one as well, eh? Yeah, so we both got 24 trades and one boost, yeah? Yeah, yeah okay, sweet. Oh, sorry, I've got two boosts. Oh, shut up, God, I don't care about your fucking boosts. Okay, I'm pretty sure you asked, but anyway. Sick of hearing pretty about how many trades sure you've you got. Are. You know that you keep bringing it up, not me. I'm just trying to be polite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, Who are you guys going to captain this weekend? Skipatanos, let's have a look. Um, I am looking at. Oh, my team's a bit of a clusterfuck. Um, <laughs> Nico Hines against Panthers makes life difficult. Um, I am a little bit all at sea at the moment. For feeders, looking like a safe option week to week. Who, who's going to be marking for feeder? That'll be the right edge. So it's Jordan Ricky. Yeah. yeah, Ricky's edge, okay. Wouldn't mind him on the other side. Um, I don't know, Timbo, what are you – Drinky again against the Tigers up there? Can't believe you even thought about it, mate. Scotty Drink bloke. Mate, we keep saying it so confidently. He's fucking – I don't know. He's doing well, but he's not well, – I don't – I'm not convinced the Cowboys are playing well enough to have anyone score a 130 plus, to be honest with you. Yeah, and that's fair. I just <clears> – <throat> the tie. I look at the Tigers' team this week 
and I go, I look at their outside backs and you look it's at Declan Casey and Josh Fletty coming in at centres. I'm just like the Cowboys on, I haven't looked at the forecast, but it's Townsville, probably a dry track. Yeah. Uh, points could just flow. And yeah, look, Scotty, fair. I was in that corner on Saturday night, captained him when he dropped the ball over the line with about five minutes to go. That would have been a ton if he'd held on to that. Absolutely heartbreaking. Speaking of captains, wouldn't hate jagging one. Uh, I just – it hasn't been horrible. Like they've mostly all been around that 70 to 80 mark. <coughs> I've had a couple that have been around like the mid-50s, which I've heard, but just cannot jag the 100-plus skipper. Yeah, no, I can't get it either. Oh. It's been a fucking nightmare. Uh, but, about. yeah, mate, I'm, I'm going drinky. Drinky, okay. I yeah. also – I don't have other red-hot options like – Again, I don't want to do Nico against Penrith. Dill Brown, who's he got? The Bunnies. Bunnies. Like, good matchup at Brown. I just – the Eels also aren't very good. So, for Fida, as you said, up against Ricky and the Broncos with lots of players out. In my team, he's just the standout, I think. Yeah. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I <laughs> Lomax will probably get a VC for me against Canterbury on Thursday night. Mm. Oh, man, I just – man, I've – Fucking uh, – my entire draft team is made out of the fucking Cowboys and it is doing my head in. It's probably going hard on a team early, isn't it? Because you – Mate, they do probably going hard on the most inconsistent team in the universe. Yeah. They're just – they're so fucking frustrating. Anyway, we'll see. Um, what are we – sit v starts, anything to touch on? My team sort of just picks itself at the moment. To be honest with yeah. you, maybe that's just a me problem. But. Just because um, – because I've got a lot of nights on the bike, kind of picks itself. So I'm, I don't have like Armstrong, Fuller, uh, Wattenius, Lesniak. I'm sitting him out. My CT uh, – I'm not playing Burbo. I've got Pierce Paul. I'm not playing Sam Hughes or Braley there. So it, it's pretty well picks itself. I, I've got Sue Fai logo, which is exciting. One of your boys. Yep. Um, that does excite me. Yeah, it didn't excite me watching him knowing that you had him the other day. I'm not going to lie. It wasn't great. Um, yeah, I, I think I literally just have to pick my side. I actually don't have enough. I, I've only got three playing CTWs this week, so I'm going to have to take an AE. But I've only got 18 players anyway, so it probably will be a Jack Collar or Wishart. Who's in worse shape, you personally or your super coach team? <laughs> um... Oh, I'll tell you what, the only saving grace for my Supercoach team is that I'm in awful fucking shape. So Hearing that, you're absolutely trading this week. No, I, 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 I don't think I will. Mate, I'm fucking – I am pretty happy just to sit on my hands for a little bit. What, about, what happens when Appy Coruscant's back spasms play up and you're without a hooker this week? <laughs> well, then I'm without a fucking hooker, aren't I? <laughs> but you're already without a CT dub. Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll play with 16. Mate, my boys <laughs> are fucking lift. Don't you worry about me, all right? <laughs> Don't any of you worry about me. Uh, <laughs> if I want to and I get desperate, I can go Taylor May to Joey Manu, but I don't In want one to. trade? Well, no, because if, if I bring in Cole, oh, okay, yeah. then I can use two trades again this week to do more shit I don't want to do. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm all at sea. How the much uh, – how – much money would you bet on Guru not trading this week and us sitting down in a week's time no, no, I'll d- and he's not made a trade? Bet on me not making more than one trade. I will probably make one, but I do want to pocket one trade yeah. this week. That That's the bet. I'll bet my bottom dollar there's going to be trades. Like you said, none. You'll be trading. You, in, know, in the I, I, span of three-minute conversation, you went from I'm not making trades to oh, I'll make one trade. No, <laughs> I, I think the Jack Cole trade I have to make – to free up cash to be able to make moves next week, but I, I don't plan to make two this week. I want to pocket at least one. Yeah, well, you're I, using yeah. very, you know, the language that you're using. Well, <laughs> basic yeah, psychology. Mate. You're just really yeah. not wanting to commit to this. I'll um, you're a man of content. We know that. Mm. You go, Cole, and I'll go, Wisha, and we can ride that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if. What, what, what's Manu's break even? What did you say it is? 77 or something. 77, okay. So it probably won't change dramatically next week. Uh, let's see what version of the Raiders turn up. Oh, God. 
Oh man, if I travel down to Canberra to watch Joey Manu score a hundred for you, I'm gonna fucking. He's cry. gonna do it, Tammy. I don't. Like, it's just it's happening, and I'll cop it. Can I'm you just, imagine I, if I'm there? If I'm there for him to do his hammy, yeah, that'd be unreal in your backyard uh, for that. everyone but Joey Manu. The thing is now, I just it's happened so many times. I know it's coming. Uh, he can't so, hurt you anymore. No. Yeah, I'll back that. He's already broken me. You can't. You can't shatter broken glass. Most toxic relationship ever, Timmy. Yeah. It's right up there. It's <laughs> right up there. Um, yeah. Is that us? Yeah. We done? Yeah. All right, late show coming your way tonight. Make sure you go check out the YouTube. We had um, the catch-up drop last night. The We caught up with some of the Finns boys, Isaiah Kartoa, Kurt Donahue, and potentially my favourite human on planet <laughs> Earth, Oren Keeley. Is a cult hero waiting to happen. Big, big fan. Um, by the way, Oren uh, really rented a few players up there at the Dolphins and they came for him in the comments. They He's, sure um, did. Yeah. <laughs> that video was so funny. We asked best and worst dressed in the team and we collabed the video with the Dolphins and it it just all the, all the boys were commenting, especially the ones that were under um, – contention for what they wear to and from training and it was really funny i feel like there's some beef today uh, mate if the uh body of one orange keely washes up on a red Cliff <laughs> beach there's going to be about 30 suspects in that squad <laughs> so very very interesting times up there uh thank you for joining us once again guys sc playbook last night derusi and the spy yeah tell you what the spy enjoyed himself over the weekend oh my goodness he sells at the Caxton and he'll, he'll be picking it up next year. I have no doubt whatsoever that Spy loves his wife and children dearly, but, my God, he will run away from them at any given moment yeah. for a brewski. Yeah, if he can, get, if he can get a beer uh, a beer with the boys and footy involved, he'll be taking it with both hands. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> love that. Good gear. Uh, thank you for joining us once again, guys, on Beers and Break Evens Late Show coming to you a little bit later tonight, so stay tuned for that. Keep an eye on SC Playbook Guru Socials to let you know of any trade updates or anything we do this weekend. I'll be making one at absolute <laughs> possible maximum. Potentially. Absolute we'll possible maximum. Yes. All right, we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. Okay.